Blessed be the name of our Lord God Almighty, who was, who is, and he is to come. A quick story. Around this time, 2,000 years ago, an event took place in this world that, that shook the world and changed the course of history of my kind. And that Jesus came to the world. After 33 years of living and uh, preaching and sharing the gospel, his mission, the Bible says he was crucified as predicted by the old prophets. So he was slain by the wicked ones. And when he was slain, the Bible says he was buried. But one promise he gave to us was that when he is buried, he will come back to life, he will rise up after three days. And after three days, he rose up from the grave. But prior to his rising from the grave, which we now celebrate as Easter, when he declared that he was going to rise again, the whole world made mockery of him. And Satan was the most to rejoice over this. And he celebrated eventually when he succeeded in killing the Son of Man. So Satan rejoiced and he celebrated. But what did he forgot that he, he celebrated too quickly? So that was an irony for him. So he celebrated too quickly because we saw on the third day, the Bible said his disciples, confirmation of over 500 people who said and saw him that he rose again from the dead. And as soon as he rose from the dead, all hell broke loose. Satan knew that he has lost it. He knew, he, 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 he knew that he's no longer in charge. And the scripture went forth to say, and when he met with his disciples in the last meeting, he told them, now I have all the authority in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. Remember, he came from heaven. He dwelt here amongst us, here on earth. And when he died, he was buried in the ground. So he was everywhere. He went, was up there, came from there, stayed with us here from here, he was buried from, from the buried. He came back to life and report back to you here on earth that look, the authority of Satan, I have taken it for him. I'm going to give it to you as you Christians. Now you're going to go out there. In my name, Jesus Christ, the son of Nazareth, you will do anything. In my name, you will cast out Satan. In my name, you will destroy the work of darkness. I've given you that authority. Satan no longer has power over you. You must now rule over him. That's the authority I have. And I'm passing that authority unto you. Meanwhile, while you are doing this, while you are doing this here on earth, you become my disciples. And I will give you the Holy Spirit who will equip you, he will comfort you, when Satan come against you with onslaught of this world to try to destroy you because you followed me. The Holy Spirit will be there to comfort you. And I will be there to deliver you. I'll be, tell, I'll be there to tell you what to say. Even if you are brought before magistrate and all this, because remember he was brought before magistrate as well. So he, knew, he knows what it is to be persecuted innocently. You've been persecuted in my own name. He said, don't worry. The Holy Spirit will be there. He will teach you things. Even those things you've forgotten, he will teach you. He will remind you of things you have forgotten. And above all, he will give you peace. He said, don't worry, they can't do anything. So this authority I give to you, use it to deal with Satan and his demons. He left and he gave us that power. He said, I'm not just going, but I'm going to prepare a place, a more better place for you. So that when I come again to finally judge Satan and his works, I will take it with me. Beloved, there is no greater assurance to that. I mean, what, what, what sort of assurance are we talking about? It's going to be greater than that. As parents, we make promises to our children. We make promises to our family member, friends, society. And sometimes we carry out these promises as human, as flawed as we are. But Jesus said, I'm coming back. Why I'm busy preparing a place for you there, you be busy here taking care of things. Be operating in my authority. Be operating in my understanding. I will be with you until the end of time. Because the life that is to come is greater than the one we have here. And he said that is life eternal. It has no beginning. It has no ending. Remember part of the title he, he, he took with him is that I am the Alpha 
I am the Omega. Book of Revelations. In other words, I'm the beginning, I am the ending. Once I start to rule my kingdom, there is no start, there is no finishing. Beloved, I look forward to that kingdom because nothing greater than that. This is what we are living here on earth, it's just a temporary. At most 100 years, if you are lucky, most people know it's 50, 60. So let's live a life that is worthy of His coming to a glorious people. Because this world has got nothing to offer, absolute nothing to offer. But the life well spent on what was done on Calvary over 2,000 years ago is the greatest investment we can ever do in this world. It's the greatest hope we can ever do in this world. So if you don't have this hope in you yet, I want to invite you today to come and receive this great hope, which is free. It's a matter of you coming and confessing Lord Jesus into your life as your Lord and Savior. And say, Lord, I've gone my own way. I've done my own thing. But now I understand they say, if we trust our life into your hand, you will take control. Today, I want to embed my life into you. I want to give you my, my obeying. My, everything about me, I want to hand it over to you. And let him begin to do a new thing in your life. And when you do this, the Bible says you become a new creature. He gives you a new hope, a new spirit, a new mindset, a new understanding. Then you begin to have a father that is assured of everything. So, on Calvary, it was done over 2,000 years ago. But it's up to you if you want to come and be a partaker and benefit of these great blessings that is await you. Remember, this life is as short as it is. But life eternal is the longest of all. And if you don't have Christ, you walk in there on your own. What you have experienced here on earth is nothing compared to what you are going to experience there. So you better get it right. Let Jesus come into your life. Surrender to him and let him have his way. It's my hope you will make that confession today and let it be the charge and the master of your life. He is real. His coming back is real. His death on the cross and rising from the death two over 2,000 years ago is real. We are not here to entertain you, but to tell you what is to come. He is love. His love passes all understanding. But you have to come and receive that love. It's not going to force it on you. You have to accept it. Thank you for listening. God bless. Don't forget to tune in our video. Subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. Share amongst your group. Let people benefit from it. Bye-bye.